Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today uh, for our virtual Scout Sunday here at Felonia United Methodist Church. Um, my name's Jordan French and as the, uh, the church is the uh, uh, charter organization um, for our uh, local uh, Cub Scout packs, BSA girls troops and BSA troops. Um, uh, I am the, uh, the charter rep uh, for the scouts uh, from the church. Um, and uh, I'm so glad that you joined us today. Uh, things are obviously a little different than um, any other scout Sunday that we've uh, had before. Um, but uh, I think this is still, you know, a special time for us to, to gather together separately um, in the safety of uh, our homes with our families um, to come together as one uh, church family and family of God. If you're visiting, visiting for the first time, uh, scout Sunday is very special to me uh, because the, the, re the whole reason that I'm here, that my family is here at the uh, church is because of scout Sunday. Um, we attended Scout Sunday uh, several years back, and that was our, the first time that we had visited the, uh, the church, um, and we ended up joining uh, just a, a few weeks later. So um, uh, if you don't have a church home now, we definitely uh, uh, hope to, uh, you know, maybe this is a chance for you to find somewhere to get plugged in. Um, but if you're just visiting us from your church family, then we thank you so much for coming um, and uh, worshiping uh, our Lord and King with us. Thank you.
Jordan French's welcome and welcome you to Valonia United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Lauren Delano, and it is a joy to be worshiping with you. We're so glad to have you visiting with us if you're part of the Scout community. We are so glad to be in partnership with you all here at our church. I want to let you know that we'll have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts participating throughout the service. They'll be leading us in many parts of worship, and we are so grateful for that. Most of the information you'll need to participate in worship will be on the screen, but it's also available in the bulletin, which you can find in the description section on Facebook or YouTube. So if you'd rather pull out your phone and scroll through the bulletin that way, or maybe print off the bulletin so you can follow along, you can do that as well. You'll see that we have a table in the middle of our pulpit and our altar, and that table is there to remind us that we're in the midst of a worship series called Table Manners. Each week we're learning from Jesus about what it looks like to gather with others in love, to gather around the table, but also just to love others well. This week the table manner or virtue we're learning about is welcome, so we hope that you feel welcome as we gather together. You will need one thing to worship, or actually two. One thing you'll need is a paper napkin or a paper towel. If you have your Linton kit, you can get the purple napkin out of your kit. If you don't, that's okay. You can just grab a white um, cloth, um, paper napkin or a paper towel. Whatever you have on hand is great. And then you'll also need a pen or marker, something you can write on the napkin or paper towel with. I also invite you if you'd like to light a, to have a candle nearby. We'll be lighting that candle after the sermon just as one of, someone leading us in prayer will light the candle at the table. At this time we come to God in prayer. We call this the prayers of the people because it's prayers that we lift up to God for ourselves and our community and our world. At the end of each part of the prayer which we call a petition I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you are invited to respond here our prayer. So let us pray together. You're welcome to have your eyes open or closed, to sit with your hands folded, or to be standing or kneeling, however you feel most comfortable praying. That is where God will meet you. Let us pray together. God, what a magnificent promise it is that you make beautiful things out of us. You have created each of us with unique gifts and callings, and you invite us to follow you so that we might use those gifts in the world. You've called us to be your hands and feet in the world, showing love and grace to everyone we meet. For it is not just us that you call beloved. Instead, you welcome every person we encounter and call them your child. Help us to see those we love and those who are challenging to love as our neighbors, and give us the strength to love them even when it's hard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we recognize those who are part of Scouts today, of Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, bless all those who have committed their, themselves to the pursuit of scouting. Allow their minds to be broadened, their hopes to be raised, and their futures filled with promise as they grow in the virtues and wisdom that come through scouting. As they learn more about you and your ways, may they be inspired to reach out in service to all in need, as they strive to become disciples who make the world a better place. May all of their efforts guide each of them to know, to love, and to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks that winter is retreating and that the days are beginning to grow longer. Yet we know that darkness still lingers in our world and in our hearts. We pray for those who are experiencing sadness and loneliness this day. We lift up those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We ask that you would be with those who are receiving treatment for illness or disease, especially those who are overcoming COVID-19. We pray for doctors and nurses who are working tirelessly to care for those who are sick. We give you thanks for those who are receiving vaccines and will continue to. We know that the toll has been heavy as we've reached over 500,000 deaths due to COVID in the U.S. and we ask that you would touch all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We ask that you would offer your comfort and strength to those in need and give us the strength to be people who offer comfort to those who experience darkness. May we remember that your light shines in the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And now we join our voices together in the prayer our Savior taught us as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite you to hear these words from our holy scriptures. Our scripture reading today comes from the letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Amen.
scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is the first of the four Gospels, and it is also the first book in the New Testament. We'll be reading from chapter 9, verses 9 through 13 today. In the verses and chapters preceding this passage we're reading, we're reading, Jesus has been healing people and calling his disciples to follow him. He has gained quite a following. Crowds follow him or flock to him when they hear he's in town, and lots of people have their eye on Jesus, following every move he makes. The scripture begins like this. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of this word, and we all say, thanks be to God. Amen. A woman named Sarah Harmeyer moved to Dallas in 2019. She moved to a neighborhood where she didn't know a soul. So she asked her dad to build a huge table that she could put in her backyard, and she sent a message to all of her neighbors saying, everyone's invited to my house on Friday night. Bring a potluck dish and let's get to know one another. She could not have expected the number of people that showed up. 90 people showed up at her house that night, accepting an invitation of welcome, 90 people. This experience led Sarah to begin an endeavor called Neighbors Table, an organization she started where she asked her dad to keep building tables so that neighbors could gather together. So far, her dad has built over 200 tables. As part of her organization, Sarah would promise to bring a table to anyone who requested one for free, as long as they put it in a place that would welcome people and help create community in their neighborhoods. Often Sarah wanted to go to their first gathering at the table so she could offer a prayer and see who gathered around and just she could remind people that 2000 years ago, Jesus gave us a commandment to love our neighbors. And through her organization, Neighbors Table, she was encouraging others to live out Jesus' charge. Alicia, one woman who attended one of these dinners, was asked how it felt to be there, to be included at the table. And her response causes us to pause. Alicia said, a lot of times I used to wonder, why didn't anyone invite me to the table? As the tax collectors and sinners gathered with Jesus for a feast that evening at Matthew's house, I imagine some of them may have had a similar feeling to Alicia, used to being left out when the dinner invitations came to their neighbors. Just the label of tax collector or sinner would have led them and their families to being ostracized in their Jewish community. Yet Jesus is present with them at the table, eating and fellowshipping with them. So what exactly is going on here? What is Jesus up to and why were the Pharisees so surprised that he was gathering with tax collectors and sinners? First, we hear in our Gospel of Matthew passage for today that Jesus called Matthew the tax collector to be his disciple. He has invited him to be a follower and proclaimer of the good news, to see what Jesus is up to in his mission and ministry. In response to Jesus's invitation, Matthew, also known as Levi in the Gospel of Mark, invites Jesus over to his house for a feast or a banquet meal. This occasion was one of celebration, though clearly not everyone was celebrating that Jesus chose to be a guest at Matthew's house. In Jesus' time, tax collectors were not well liked. You might remember the story from the Gospel of Luke about Zacchaeus, a tax collector. They were viewed as traitors by their Jewish peers. They worked directly for the Roman Empire, and their work affected the poor most severely. The tax collectors were given a region that they were to collect taxes from, and they were given a fixed sum that they had to collect to give to the Roman government. But they were also allowed to collect as much extra money as they could. And they didn't have to give that extra money to the Roman government. Instead, they could keep the difference. 
Thus, these tax collectors were known for often taking more than their fair share, so they could pad their own pockets. Jesus' willingness to interact with tax collectors and others who took advantage of people or didn't follow the Sabbath laws was unbelievable to the religious leaders. And while there weren't necessarily any laws prohibiting Jesus and his disciples from being in the company of tax collectors and sinners, the Pharisees never would have opened their hearts or tables to them. The Pharisees had meticulous rules for their eating habits, and they valued religiously edifying conversation. They did not want to entertain those who did not live up to their standards. Jesus has caused quite a ruckus because he's demonstrating that his mission and ministry does not place a lot of stock in setting up boundaries and walls that divide people into groups, labeled clean or unclean, righteous or unrighteous, faithful or sinner. Jesus came to heal and teach and love all who needed to be healed and loved. And Jesus, Jesus believed transformation was possible. Not transformation just by human standards or the rules we place on the world, but transformation by God's standards. If there are some who believe they're too righteous or not in need of forgiveness or healing, Jesus will focus on those who do. He will pay particular attention to those who are ostracized and cast out from the table and the temple. And he will do all he can to bring about God's kingdom, whether or not the audience keeping an eye on him is offended by his willingness to throw his arms wide open to anyone and everyone. And by the way, Jesus did not just say that all were welcome or that God loved everyone. Instead, Jesus demonstrated it over and over again. After all, in Jesus' time, the people you ate meals with, the people who you associated with, said something about your identity, about your value and worth. The dinner here with the tax collectors and sinners was a banquet or festival meal of celebration probably thrown in Jesus' honor. Table fellowship in Jesus' day was viewed as establishing a covenant of friendship. By choosing to eat with sinners, Jesus appears to be endorsing those he has gathered with that evening. The table Jesus chooses to sit at is one of acceptance and welcome and mercy for all. There is no one who would be turned away from Jesus' table, not then and not now. So what do we learn from Jesus' throwing away of the rules, not paying attention to the expectations of others or the boundaries that society put on him and others at mealtimes? What do we learn about the way Jesus lives out God's word in action? In this passage, Jesus tells us what his mission is. I've come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. Jesus is here to help those in need. He's here to model what it looks like to love our neighbors. He's here to show us that God's love has no limit. God's mercy has no margin. God's welcome has no walls. As Jesus responds to the Pharisees' critiques of him, he says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice which reminds us as people of faith that going through the motions or practicing our religion just to check off boxes or appear pious doesn't get us anywhere if we aren't willing to be steeped in God's mercy and share that mercy with others. As we encounter people, do we look at them through a lens of grace or are we quick to put people in boxes or label them? Christ teaches that looking through the lens of mercy is how God desires for us to navigate the world. And of course, in theory, the Pharisees valued mercy, but in reality, their actions didn't always show that belief in action because they weren't willing to eat or embrace those that didn't meet their standards like Jesus did. As people of faith, we're invited to pay attention to when we put boundaries or labels on people. We're invited to reflect on who we've left out or kept out of our group gatherings when we have withheld an invitation of welcome to people who desire to be part of our church, our community organizations, our homes? What does our unwillingness to be invitational tell us about ourselves and our fears? The woman I told you about earlier, Sarah, who started the Welcome Table organization said in an interview, there are two ways to live. We can either live in love or live in fear. So often the boundaries we put up in our unwillingness to be invitational is due to fear to fear of differences, fear of not knowing how to invite someone to the table or what to say once we're at the table. 
fear that we might not be fully accepted for who we are. If we work to overcome these fears and love our neighbors no matter what, we might be surprised by the way God draws us together with those we don't know well. Or how God might teach us something new about how we can choose love over fear, joy over division, peace over distrust. You may be thinking, how can I be invitational when we can't actually gather around the table together in this pandemic? We're in this sort of liminal space, a transitional period between how life was before COVID and how it will be when COVID ends. A time when it's risky to eat a meal with people outside of our household. Yet, I believe times of transition are a great time for us to figure out what's next. So I want to invite you to use this season as a time of preparation for what is to come. As people of God, we're invited to bring about God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And we get a glimpse of God's kingdom as Jesus gathers at the table with those who were outcasts. We're invited to consider how we can make our celebrations, our dinners, our feasts, occasions for healing, for reconciliation, for breaking down barriers that exclude others, and even for reaching out to invite others to discover God's presence in our midst. So I invite you to imagine what can our tables look like post-COVID? Our tables at home and at church, our tables in other organizations we're a part of. How can we begin to plan for a bigger table? One where all are invited and feel welcome to bring their whole selves. How do we set a table for the person who wonders why they've never been invited to the table before? I mentioned at the beginning of worship that you would need a paper napkin or a paper towel. If you have your Linton kit, you can get the purple paper napkin out of your kit. If you don't, you can just get a white napkin or a paper towel, whatever you have on hand. And you also need a pen or a marker that can write on these napkins or the paper towel. I wanna invite you either now during our next song or sometime today after worship is over to write the rules of welcome for your table, your dinner table on this napkin. Who is welcome at your table? What are the rules of your table? Think about those and ponder those together or alone as a time of reflection. Maybe your rules are that all are welcome. That laughter is the best medicine at the table. That disagreement should be resolved through kind conversation. Or maybe that listening is essential and we don't talk over one another. What rules of welcome will make your plate table a place where people feel accepted? Maybe then write down one action step you can take as COVID ends to invite someone new to your kitchen table for a meal or a conversation. You can do this as an individual, maybe as a family, if you need to cut your napkin apart so each person can write on the napkin and then you can share your ideas together to create some sort of family table rules, that would be great as well. You know that some people, especially architects and artists, use paper napkins to draw up big ideas. Maybe an architect trying to show a plan to someone or someone writing lyrics of a song that pops into their head. They wanna get it down before it disappears and sometimes all they have is a scrap piece of paper or a napkin at a meal. The napkin serves as a place to hold a dream that will eventually become a reality. May the dreams that Christ plants in our hearts to be people who offer welcome with reckless abandon. And may the rules of welcome you or your family write on your paper napkin. Move from a dream to a reality. Amen. May it be so. At this time, Jen Walkup is going to lead us in our weekly prayer that we do after the sermon that reminds us of the table manner or virtue that we learn from Jesus today. She's gonna to help us to celebrate the table manner of welcome. Today, our table manner or the virtue we learn from Jesus' example is welcome. We celebrate that as people of faith, there is always room for everyone at the table. We learn from Christ that there is no one who is unworthy of God's love. Let us pray together as we celebrate this table manner. Let us pray. God, you have created everyone in your image and you welcome us all with open arms. We are grateful that you love us just as we are and that even when we sin against you, your love remains steadfast. 
You model this overwhelming love for us so that we might love others too, not picking or choosing who deserves your love, but instead trusting that all people are welcome at your table. Guide us to pay attention to those we aren't always prone to welcome and soften our hearts to them. Let us throw open our arms and welcome all to your table, to our church, into our lives. Amen. Thank you so much, Jen, for leading us through that time of prayer. I want you to know as we move into our offering moment that because you give to Valonia United Methodist Church, we are able to support and care for and celebrate our community. This week, our mission and outreach team led by Cheryl Garner took gifts of appreciation to our bus drivers for the Valonia School District. We were able to take 40 bags of gifts and encouragement to the bus drivers. They were placed in their seats of their bus on Friday afternoon so that they were there for them when they got on the bus to do their afternoon routes to take kids home. Thank you so much to the mission team for thinking of this great way for us to celebrate and appreciate bus drivers in our school district. And also thanks to you for giving so that we could support the bus drivers in this beautiful way. I do want to remind you there are a few ways you can give to Valonia United Methodist Church. You can write a check and mail it in. You can also stop by the office to give your tithe or offering during office hours, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Or you can go to the Shop Now button on our Facebook page that'll take you to our online giving platform, PayPal, and you can give that way as well. We're also encouraging people to set up bill pay through their bank so you can do a monthly recurring gift that way as well. If you have questions about how to give to Valonia United Methodist Church, please let me know and I'd love to have a conversation with you. Let us pray together. Great and generous God, our lives are surrounded by things that steal our lives, inflict and destroy us. The tithes and offerings we share with you this day are a way of keeping us focused, not on the things that would take life away, but on the things that will renew our lives. Hope, love, compassion, empathy. Receive these gifts that they might be an offering that has an impact on our community beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. Might these gifts of our tithes and offerings give life to our community and spread love. In the holy name of Jesus, our Messiah, we pray. Amen. Normally, during this time in worship, we say the Apostles' Creed, but today, instead, we're going to use the Boy Scout Law and the Girl Scout Promise as creeds that remind us of the way that the Scouts in our midst are seeking to live lives worthy of God's call, seeking to love others, seeking to have integrity and kindness and so many other things. It's important that we remember that scouting is one way that these students are learning to live out their faith and we're so grateful for the ways they do that and the adults who support them and lead them in this endeavor as well. You're going to hear the scout law and scout promise and then you're going to hear a couple of scouts talk about ways that they learn that scouting helps them to learn to grow in their daily lives and to seek after God and to love others. So let us hear these words. saying not to do this and you don't do that and then like uh helpful you can help other people like hold the door and uh like take out the trash and stuff like that hi i'm with troop 6444 and today i just wanted to talk to you how as scouts we are guided by the following values first we have integrity we act with complete honesty trustworthiness and loyalty 
and to each other and everyone else. Um, we have self-respect and respect for others. In care, we support others and take care of the world that we live in. In belief, we explore faiths, beliefs, and attitudes, just as Robert Baden-Powell did, the founder of BSA, when he discovered scouting on the principle that scouting is Christianity in action. And lastly, we have cooperation. We strive to make a positive difference and we cooperate with others and we make friends. On my honor, I will try to serve God in my country. To help others. At all times and live by the Girl Scout law. what a joy and honor it has been to worship with you. We thank the scouts who joined us today and not just worshiping with us, but who led us in worship. We thank you for the ways that we get to partner with you at Valonia United Methodist Church. We are so happy that we have this partnership and we trust that as COVID starts to come to an end, we will be able to continue to partner together in the coming days and weeks and months. We are so honored to be a part of the life of the scouts that gather here. I want you to know um, that you are invited to our table. That actually it's not just our table, you're invited to God's table. We're just imperfect vessels of God that will show up and sit down right beside you. That will seek to include you in laughter and in joy and in challenges. And all that comes with living as people who are striving to love God and love our neighbors a little bit better. If you're interested in becoming a part of our congregation, I'd love to have a conversation with you about that. I'd love to sit down with you and share about the ways that this church seeks to love God and love others well. I also want you to know that next Sunday, Feb on March 7th, we will be doing communion together during worship. So worship will be at 9 a.m. again next week on Facebook or on YouTube. And you will just need to have communion elements ready and available. You can have those elements either by coming by the church to get prepackaged elements. Some of you receive those as part of your Linton kits. You can come by during church hours and we'll give them to you. If you don't have a, if you don't have the prepackaged elements and want to participate, you just need bread or crackers and grape juice or water to be able to participate next week. You can provide those elements at home. Again, if you don't know about communion or you've never taken communion, I want you to know that our communion table is one that is open to everyone. So whether you love God or you want to love God, you can take communion with us. If you have questions about that as well, about what communion is or why we welcome everyone to take it, I'd love to have a conversation with you about that as well. As we go from this place, might we trust that God's table is wide. God's table is one of welcome and that we are invited not just to pull up a seat at God's table, but to invite others to the table as well. Go in peace. Amen.
Hey, Valonia United Methodist Church, Jeremy Carson here. And uh, we've got a special uh, opportunity for service coming up as we are planning our Holy Week music services. Uh, typically in the past, we've done a cantata, but with the pandemic, we we're not able to do that this year. But we have created a uh, program that follows Christ's passion uh, from uh, the upper room all the way through the trial and then ultimately to the cross uh, that we're going to air on Monday, Thursday, and on Good Friday. And it's an awesome opportunity for you to serve. We need volunteers. We need volunteers of people who can sing or who can um, do a dramatic reading. You don't have to be musically inclined uh, to, to participate in this, but we need as many people as possible to make this as special as possible. Our plan is to record on March the 19th, 20th, and 21st. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll have times where we can socially distance, and that'll also give us plenty of time to practice uh, if we need to. The musical selections, um, if you plan on singing, uh, have been, we are going to have multiple options for you, but they are all gonna fall within the theme, and most of them, uh, most of the songs are very familiar. So we're looking forward uh, to hearing from you in, in ways that you can serve the church and, and serve your, um, your fellow congregants. And uh, we look forward to working with you in this uh, Holy Spirit-inspired um, service.